you for joining us today uh, for lesson 10 or joining me. Um, today, as you can see, we will focus on the purpose of tasks, on designing tasks, and also how um, they can be used to scaffold collaboration in the classroom. Um, so this is what lesson 10 is about. I want to um, welcome everyone. So um, I would love to say that I'm uh, calling you from beautiful, sunny Hawaii. However, I'm in um, really cold New Jersey and um, with lots of snow. And um, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Liliana Lopez, and I am a supervisor of World Languages, English Language Learners, and Music at the Fairlawn School District and in Fairlawn, New Jersey. And I'm also a national faculty member for the Buck Institute for Education. Uh, before we continue, I'd like, also like to thank uh, Lauren Scheller, who um, collaborated, collaborated with me to create um, this presentation. And, um, and hopefully, um, we'll learn a lot together uh, through this. So, hi, Amanda, great. Yay, Jersey girl. Okay, <laughs> so, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the difference between actually doing projects and project-based learning. Learning, um, You know, um, project-based learning is not a research project. We do not um, tell students, you know, you're going to look up the following information, check in, and we'll get back to it um, in a couple of weeks. You know, you know, show me what you can do on the computer, that sort of deal. Um, project-based learning is a highly scaffolded um uh, very, um, very, uh, how would we say this? Um, highly scaffolded and, um, very structured, really structured by the teacher. The teacher with intent and purpose, um, knows what's happening in every single part of the project and what the students are doing as well. So, the planning part for PBL is a lot of work for the teacher, but the actual classroom work, um, really goes on to the student, which is which is a, an, an amazing. Um, it's great for us. So, um, I want to talk about tasks, and I wanted us to look at um, this really great document from the Partnership for 21st Century Skills and ACFO, and thinking about um, what language learning looks like today and how PBL. Uh, really helps us to move in that direction or takes us in that in that direction. Um, I want you to notice where tasks are, where we're going to be paying attention to today. So we want to talk about and we want to think about in our projects that where we are creating, what are the personalized real world tasks that our students are going to do um, in the project that you're creating. So that's something that we're going to think about for the next 20 minutes. Um, we're also going to think about how these tasks lead us to collaboration um, in the classroom or vice versa, how does collaboration lead us to these amazing tasks? So that's something that we're gonna talk about today. Um, I wanted to start off with um, making that immediate connection between language function and tasks. Um, as you can see in this um, table, and I did get this information from colorincolorado.org, um, language, functions are completely associated with tasks and tasks associated with language function. So thinking about what uh, our tasks are, we also have to keep in mind, what is that language function that our students are going to do in the project? So um, the way this is ordered, it's it's the, uh, it's the um, like Bloom taxonomy. So we're gonna talk about um, if the students are seeking information, then the tasks that are associated with them are defining, counting, drawing, um, as you can see. Um, when we think about our um, proficiency levels for our students, we also need to um, think about what will students be able to do in, um, what students will be able to do in the project. What do we want them to do? What language function? And that'll help us with our task. So I'm just gonna give you a second here to read this, to look this over. So we have language function, seek information, inform, compare, order, and classify. And then what are the tasks that the students are going to do? Um, we could also connect this, this to our three modes of communication. And um, we have to, as the teachers, understand 
how we wrap this all together. I want us to think about our, yeah, with Stephen, I, I want to think of, I want you to think about your students' proficiency level and what they're going to be able to do by the end of the project, which is really important, or um, when you decide to assess them or to assess the task, how, which of the following language functions do you want them to be able to do? So I'm just going to continue. Um, I'm going to continue with um, the other language functions, and um, it's going to be great because you're going to be able to go back to this and take a look and really think about, in my project, what task am I going to have them do? As you're reading the task as well, I want you to think about how can we define a task? What What is a task, you know, when thinking about it? Um, and what's the simplest way to define a task? Because um, when you look at all these verbs, really, um, we have a lot to think about what our students um, intentionally um, and with purpose, what we want our students to be able to do by the end of the project. And that's what we always want to keep in mind in PBL is um, we always think with the end in mind. And that's going to be really important as we continue. So let me show you this last, last table. And as you can see, um, think, keeping in mind, once again, the proficiency level of your students um, as we get to justify, solve, synthesize, and evaluate. Um, I'm not going to say that a novice learner can't do this. Um, what I am going to say is that it's going to take a lot of scaffolding um, for the student to be able to do this in the target language. And that's something that takes time. And we all know that language acquisition takes lots of time. And thinking about um, the tasks, uh, how are you going to get them to su successfully complete the task? Because that's what we're there for as um, the teacher, as the facilitator, as the coach in the room. Um, how can my students successfully complete the following tasks? How am I going to scaffold um, so they're going to be able to, in the target language, um, you know, uh, do these tasks? So one more minute just to take a look, and you'll be able to look back at this as well um, when thinking about your uh, project blueprint. Could you explain how to go about – oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Thank you. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to actually show you an example of a, t of a project, and then we're going to break it down. So thinking about um, – and I had asked you this before – thinking about what is a um, – the definition of a task, I'm going to say it in the most simplest way possible, and I love Long's definition of this because when we think about our students, we should always think this way. It's the hundred, they are the hundred and one things people do in everyday life, at work, at play, and in between in the target language. Well, you know, what really all of the things that we do, we want our students to be able to do it in the target language. So I wanted to keep this in the simplest way possible. Um, I love this definition of a task because it really takes us away from, you know, when we think about the traditional classroom, we're thinking about um, verb conjugations. You know, do people in everyday life conjugate verbs as they walk around, as they go to work, as they play, you know, as or all the things that they do? No. So we really want to talk about communication and um, think about specific tasks that you're going to set your students up to do. So um, I want to give you some examples and think about our students, keep in mind. So how are they going to um, use this language? Um, so here we go. So I have an example. Um, when students travel to another country where the language is spoken, um, you know, students ask for directions, they have to understand the directions, they have to purchase tickets, and they have to book hotel rooms, they have to read signs, um, they have to read informational materials, I mean, and, and we know this, they have to read menus. Um, when thinking about a university student and what they have to do in a country where the language is spoken, um, they have to understand lectures, take notes, read, read academic materials, um, speak with other students, um, so when thinking about this information, right away when thinking about a task, 
you have to always immediately think about the students in your classroom. And what is the purpose of this project? What is the reason that they're learning this language? What is the task that they will be able to do successfully um, during the project? And let me just show you a couple of more examples. And then we're going to um, talk about scaffolding and what that looks like. So um, when you talk about history and culture, they have to read history. They have to understand the plays. Um, movies, other performances. They have to actually interview people. Um, and when you talk about legal assistance to native speakers, um, what is a task? They have to gather statistical information, explain legal requirements, explain social and cultural expectations. So the task is related to the function, the language function, and this is what they're going to be able to do that's associated. Let me know if I'm going a little bit too fast. Um, if you want to read, take a little bit longer to read this. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. All right, so let's continue. Um, now, I'm going to share with you a project idea here from New Jersey. Woo um, and what I'm going to do is um, read you the project idea. Um, let you know the driving question, and then talk a little bit about the community that um, we did this with. Um, so um, here is our project idea. As a diverse com school community, we are all responsible for raising awareness about the benefits of healthy living. Our French two students will devise a French campaign for healthier living for our Haitian community. Our driving question is, how can we promote a healthy lifestyle within our community now? This came um, from a French classroom in a community where there was a population of Haitian speakers. Uh, I'm sorry, of French speakers, Haitian community, I apologize, um, of French speakers. And um, they really, what we wanted to do with this project was um, think about just in general, what is healthy living? And not only for us to talk to them about healthy living, but for them to also let us know about um, healthy living. It's something where everyone is learning from each other. So um, in this project idea, there were, um, with this project idea, with this driving question, there were two uh, products. There was an actual individual product, and then there was a team product. So. For the individual product, um, they had to complete a healthy living journal. Every student had to complete a healthy living journal. And then for the team product, it was act an actual group presentation using um, any media that they wanted to. So um, keeping that in mind, that media form, um, that might be something that you would need to teach your students as well. Um, so what are the possible tasks? Like if we were go, we were go think about the language functions and the task, we want to think about um, these products. What do the students need to, need to do in order to successfully complete the Healthy Living Journal and to um, be a successful participant in the group presentation? <clears throat> um, so right away, when thinking about this, we thought about the language functions. We thought about um, the structures and patterns that are needed. Um, the tier one vocabulary words and the tier two vocabulary words. So when thinking about a journal and when thinking about um, their healthy living, they needed to describe and they needed to explain. Oh, absolutely. Like um, we're going to, uh, we could talk about culture. Um, so uh, we thought about, you know, for every day. Okay. Um, for every day we, um, Students should be able to um, discuss um, what they did on a daily basis and how, what, what they eat or what they ate. Um, and then also, what are the things that they do for the Tier 1 vocabulary and then the Tier 2 vocabulary. So keep that in mind um, as you um, – we think we have this big idea and how now we go um, from the actual product to the tasks and then from the tasks to um, the language functions and the structures. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I want you to keep in mind that um, you have so many um, ideas in your toolbox and that 
Um, I want you to use the tools in your toolbox that you already have because we can use CPR. You know, we can use all of the um, to scaffold everything that we want with our students. We've been doing that for years. Um, so it could also look like this. And I don't want you to forget, like, you have a wealth of knowledge that you've collected, a wealth of tools. Um, so I want you to use them in when you scaffold um, for your students. So here's an example of how we can get our students to a, a way of scaffolding for them. So you would put the students in circles and you would complete, um, you know, to keep keeping in mind all the Kagan, um, um, the cooperative learning, um, you're going to have a, a speed dating activity. And the students are going to uh, complete the journal entry with someone across from them, like a one day or two day or the weekend journal entry. entry. And the student across from them is going to say, yes, I do that too, or I do not do that. Um, um, yes, I agree with that or no. So we would have to keep in mind, like, what is the language that they're going to need in order for them to be successful in those circles um, and to know that they are successfully completing their journals. Um, the other way is that um, they could really show the writing as they explain if, if it's necessary. So um, keeping in mind the tasks and then what we have in our toolbox and how we scaffold for them, these are activities that all are going to create um, lots of language in the classroom and they're going to be collaborating, uh, collaborating with each other. Um, and they could also be thinking about um, sharing ideas of what is it that our um, our healthy um, uh, journal looks like. So when you think about a task, it should include um, the language function goal, some type of situation or some type, type of context. So for the um, media PowerPoint where they're presenting, um, they're presenting for, um, to the Haitian community, but they're also learning from the Haitian community um, about um, fruits and vegetables and what's in Haiti um, and what they know about um, healthy living. So it's, it, it is a back and forth. It shouldn't just be like, hey, this is the way you live healthy. It's we're learning culturally um, with each other. And the great thing was in the community where this project took place, um, there was a, a lots of EL students, um, uh, Haitian EL students, as well as families in the district that really were supportive of this project. Um, you should know the role. Um, students should know the role. Um, we can provide specific instructions, and um, we can we have options. We always have options. We could have sentence stems. We could have um, you know sentence starters for them. We they can use man manipulatives to go back and forth with the language. So. Thinking about tasks and then moving um, about, you know, moving to our collaboration, um, we want to ensure and assess that, yes, in our project, students are collaborating. And um, with the media presentation of the um, of healthy living, students have to collaborate with each other. Um, I'm going to refer here to the project design rubric for um, from the Buck Institute for Education. And um, I love this rubric uh, because it really, um, uh, I love these rubrics because um, they help, they empower us, the teacher, to um, use a rubric to understand, like, am I doing this right? Like, is this a strong PBL project? And so um, we're going to just right now focus on collaboration, which is one of the 21st century skills. And um, we're going to make sure that there is a collaborative team um, in, in this healthy project. We did have that. Um, and how they collaborate with, you know, beyond the classroom, which in this healthy lifestyle um, project, they collaborated with um, Haitian community members. So. I wanted to share like, definitely resources. Um, when thinking about collaboration, we can, depending on the proficiency level of the students, um, we can actually take this information that's on here. Um, this collaboration rubric is actually two pages. I only, I'm only showing you the first page. But wouldn't it be amazing if, depending on the proficiency level of our students, we can um, you know, take the language and make it student friendly in the novice level by 
um, say, you know, we could take something simple as like responsibility and putting it in the target language and then putting like thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, if that was for a novice classroom where we wanted them to collaborate, them, uh, they, we wanted them to self-assess on collaboration, or we can take the language here depending on um, the language level of the students and, you know, take this information and, and put it in the target language. You know, are you prepared and ready to work? Um, so it really depends on what, what language you see here that benefits you and your student, which is the most important at their level. So, um, I wanted to, um, show you this, which is more for like six through 12th, and I could definitely see this being used for higher ed. Um, but also something as simple as this for K through 12 and using it in our novice classroom and thinking about, um, you know, how students co collaborate and doing this um all in the target language because we could take these pictures and take these simple sentences and put them in the language of our choice. Um, so keep this in mind. I wanted to share these with you and um, not knowing um, you know what all the levels are for your students for proficiency levels or what age they are. Um, I thought that both would give us some great ideas on how can um, we adapt this and make it best for our classroom. So, um, when, and, and it was a great, you know, with thinking about the, um, this webinar right now, we, um, as we move into the next session about, um, responsibility, um, there's so many ways for, um, the teacher to facilitate, um, and the students to take ownership on responsibility. Um, it seems a lot of times, um, in a traditional classroom, teachers are, um, used to being the hover, like that helicopter who moves around the room and is in charge of um, observing everything. In this case, we want to um, make the students aware that it's their responsibility to collaborate and take responsibility. So we want to keep a project management log. Um, we want students, and, and same thing, depending on the language level of the students, um, this could be done all in the target language. You know, like a level one student can say like, um, you know, I worked today, or um, uh, I'm sorry, not a level one. I'm thinking in high school terms. Um, a novice, you know, high and intermediate low student, um, you know, can um, use this, can complete this in the target language, and this all could be done in the target language. I wanted to show you the project team contract as well. Um, the best thing about the project team contract, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this example. However, um, what's most important is that the students complete the agreement. Um, uh, not, you know, you could have these words, but if they could add their own, it would be amazing. Once again, this could be done in the target language. So when thinking about tasks and our students, um, I want you to really keep in mind that um, we have introverted students and extroverted students. I mean, we have every type of student in our classroom. It's going to be really important for you to know who are your students. You have to survey them. You have to create team, team building activities. You have to collect data from them. You know, are they um, a really, you know, high achieving student? Are they someone who, um, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Um, and that's going to be really important because when you think about distributing tasks and collaborating, you're going to want to set every student up for success. And you need to know what are the student strengths, where are the areas of growth, and how along either your semester courses, your yearly, your project, let's say, um, that you are going to ensure that they're improving upon them. Um, think about using protocols. Think about um, moments of reflection where the students um, have to um, – um, really take time to think, am I that extroverted student who's taking up all this time for my, stu you know, um, hogging up time? Or um, am I someone who needs a little push to talk more? And um, definitely foster a team culture in your classroom. So just to finish up, I know I'm running a little bit over. I'm so sorry. Um, I am going to show you how to assess collaboration and um, uh, you could do it via journal, written oral reports, teacher observations. And then I wanted to get an idea of, oops, I'm sorry, I wanted to get a, an idea, like just with a thumbs up or thumbs down, if you could identify what are tasks. However, um, there's not enough time, so I'm sorry. But these are questions that you can be asking yourself and saying, you know, do I understand what a task is? You know, how does it trigger authentic language use? 
and um, how do we assess collaboration. So that information is there for you. I want to thank you so much for your time, and um, I look forward to hearing all about your projects. Thank you. Thank you.